Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, this video I want to talk about setting up Myth TV, uh, which is equivalent to setting up your TV tuner card. And let me just preface by saying that this is I'm not going to talk about the automatic setup at the beginning, you know, when Sarah comes on and asks your name and all that stuff and how many rooms in your house. Um, this is not how to do that. This is how to do it after the system's up and running and you want to set up a card. And also, this is going to apply to North America. Sorry, any um, international watchers. But uh, all I know is what I've done. So I'm going to talk about how I did it in North America and using Schedules Direct for the listings. So here we go. Starting from the main menu, the main screen. Just uh, open the menu. Go over here to Advanced. Pick Computing. Over here on the right, you've got uh, bookmarks for in the the web. At the top you've got the Pluto admin site. That is the um, administrator website for the whole Linux MCE system. This is a good place to to spend some time just learning. But uh, that's how you get there. You click on that. But this is what we want over here on the left. Myth TV setup. Go ahead and open it. You're gonna have to do some pre-scaling the first time you load this up but every time after that it's quick and what you're going to do is work from the top down so start in general the first two screens you don't need to know anything about the third screen is the one that has some options you need to worry about at the top you've got TV format this is where you tell it if you're NTSC, if you're ATSC PAL, CCAM, whatever so make sure you tell it the right format for your area the next option has to do with closed captioning uh, just make sure it agrees with the area so I'm using the NTSC closed caption and then this option is what you want to what you want to look out for it's called the channel frequency table the default to US broadcast and that the broadcast TV is the free stuff that comes over the air not over the wire so well, actually some of it comes over the wire but you know that's the free stuff that you don't have to pay for you know if you use rabbit ears that's what you got broadcast but I don't. I have a cable from Comcast. So I'm going to change it to US cable and then keep going. You just push next until you get back to the main menu. Okay, there we go. Next, you got to set up your capture card. This is your tuners. So at the top, do new capture card. At the top, it asks for the card type. You got to tell it what kind of card you've got. And there's different cards. Um, the different card types and it's kind of confusing I don't know how to explain all of them but there's one specific type that your card will be and mine happens to have an MPEG encoder I've got a PVR 500 from Hopog it's a great tuner by the way um, so I'm gonna pick MPEG encoder and click finish and then this card's got two tuners on it so I gotta do that again Whoop! I'm gonna tell it to use the MPEG encoder type, but this time I gotta change the video device to video one instead of zero. So now Myth TV knows that I have two inputs coming from an MPEG encoder card. So I'll push escape to get back to the main menu. Oh, and you wanna use a keyboard to do this because you need an escape key to get out of some of these menus. If you use a remote, you might get stuck, you know, and not be able to make it out. Some of the places don't have a back button or a finish button. All right, next is the video sources. Uh, this has to do with the, the service you use to get TV listings and schedules. And so I use Schedules Direct. It's really cheap. It's $15 a year as opposed to TiVo, which is $15 a month. And um, it gives me listings 13 days in advance. So I almost get two weeks of programming to look at. And so up here, give it a name. I'm going to call it Cable Home. That's just so you can keep track of them if you use more than one uh, list grabber. And then there's choices right here to use uh, Schedules Direct or the over-the-air guide data, which is not as good and doesn't go as far. And then you've got specific countries that you can choose. I don't know much about the other ones. I just know that I use Schedules Direct and I'm in North America. So put the username in, put the password in. And I come over here to retrieve lineups, push enter. 
and you need an internet connection for this to work. But it worked because now in the direct data lineup it says, you know, Comcast cable and then my zip code. And so I know that it's, it sees my list that I've set up on the Schedules Direct website. So push finish and then escape and then input connections. Now this is all, these are all the inputs on my TV tuner card. And since there's two tuners, the, every input is doubled. So, you know, I've got a tuner one, tuner two, you know. I've got S-Video one, S-Video two. But I just want to mess with the tuners. So I'm going to select tuner one and come up here to video source and tell it to use the list grabber that I just set up, cable home. And then you've got two options here. You can scan for channels or fetch the channels from the listing source. If you're using your schedules direct and it accurately describes your cable lineup, I would suggest using the fetch cable from listing or fetch channels from listing source. It just um, it's faster. It'll give you what do you call it the the channel logos and it'll name the channels. It won't just say adding channel two, adding channel three. You know, because when you scan for channels, that's what it names each channel. It says, I found channel 2, and then it names it adding channel 2. So it's kind of a pain in the butt. you got to go through and change each name when you use scan for channels. But if you use fetch, it works a lot better. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to push enter, and it thinks, okay, and it's done. I didn't have to scan channels, and now it's asking for the starting channel, and I can just say, you know, start on channel 11. And then finish. And then I gotta do the same thing with my second tuner down here. So I'll just do that really quick. I won't tell you, I won't talk about it, just do it. Alright. So that's done. I push escape. And then you can go to channel editor and s see all the channels that it fetched. And so, you know, I can see already that this looks like my cable lineup. I see all the channels. I don't see any that I've never seen before. And so if that looks good and each one has a name, push escape and then push escape again and it'll say you know blah 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 do this push enter so that's it and I did that without going to the uh, the Kubuntu desktop it's just right there and afterwards you're gonna have to wait a little while it takes Linux MCE you know a few minutes to get all the lineups straightened out and so if I go over here to Media TV, everything might not be completed yet, but it should be should do pretty well. Okay, and here's a uh, here's the TV. I still gotta set the aspect ratio. It's not right yet. But um, let's check the channel listings. Okay, see how there's there's a name here, but there's black on this side. There's nothing here. That's because it hasn't filled all of it in yet. So, you know, just a few things. Not 13 days worth of data. So, just give it a little while. And you saw right there, one just got added to it. So, just be patient and load up. And I don't have time in this video, but I'm going to talk in the next one about how to use MythWeb. And MythWeb is a really powerful interface that you use a browser for. Okay, here we go. The Myth TV is ready. However, it's going to take some time before the guide data is populated. So, yeah, it's just going to take a little while to add up those 13 days and get them listed. But in the next video, I'm going to talk about how to use MythWeb. And you can schedule recordings through that. And other ways, I'll also teach you some other ways of how to record shows and look up shows. But, um... One of the big things you can do in MythWeb is add thumbnails to your TV shows. So that instead of a blank picture, when it finally makes it into your videos page, you actually get a thumbnail of the logo of the show or whatever. So stay tuned, and hopefully I'll have that up soon. Thanks for watching.